Order your men to stop their firing. I will show you my personal army build. Operator. It is time. Do the. How you say. Funky monkey inquisitor coat is about to unleash the cheese. To suggest that we can learn anything about the simian nature from a study of man is sheer nonsense. Why? Man is a nuisance. Dr. Zayas. Planet of the Apes lesser known fact. The entire Warhammer 40,000 universe and all its depressing crushing grim darkness. From the wearisome toiling of factory serfs. The endless struggle of the Imperial Guard against overwhelming odds, the callous judgement of the Inquisition, the fiery fanaticism of the Akulshiaki, the malevolence of the Chaos Gods, to the plots of the Necrons and Elder and all the rest is just volumes upon volumes of setup for the fact that there are mad scientist space orangutans zipping around. Overview. The Jacaro. Pongo Ingenio. Fun fact. It's the same genus as the real life orangutan. Are an ape-like race created by the old ones that to serve as the tech staff during the war in heaven. It is questionable if they are truly a sapient race despite being technologically advanced. Because they don't possess a language, culture, or any greater motivation than bare survival. Thus the Imperium usually considers them to be animals and treats them as such. And if you think that this is said in a derogatory manner, think again. This means that humans are not determined to exterminate them like they would be if Jokero would be your average sapient alien species and even attempt to have one as a pet like some members of the Inquisition do. It is speculated that their understanding of technology is coded into their genes, much like oh god boys, mech boys, pain boys etc. However, they differ from their green-skinned brethren because their technology isn't psychically taped together crap. These space apes are somehow potentially more advanced than the entire Imperium. Almost all of the Mechanicus, and, in different fields of technology, most elder craftsmen, they are capable of interstellar travel and migrate as a pack in large, perfectly geometric spaceships which make use of invisible currents of energy, inherent to the fabric of the universe. While it is rare that they choose to do this, a large percentage of Jacaro live upon these spacecraft. These craft are some of the most powerful in the galaxy. The Death Watch once attempted to attack a Jacaro star frame only to be fended off by an entire fleet's worth of firepower. They create digital weapons, so called because they are worn on a person's fingers, not because they're CGI. Pretty much all post Horus Heresy digital weapons, which some factions, mainly high up Imperials and influential Tech Priests, make use of. They also make the spirit suits found amongst the high nobility of hive worlds such as Necromunda or worlds and the Calyxis sector. Mainly, rich imperial snobs will somehow use Jokero as a protector at protector ape, a euphemism for forced labor to get cool shit. Despite this, GW law says Jokero are extremely rare and impossibly elusive to boot. They are fairly analogous to animals and so are instinctively distrustful of other beings. Almost always rightfully so. If you do manage, by some miracle, to get a hold of one of these orangutans, and not get curb stomped by their teeny multi laser rings and bracelets, you still need to manage to keep them. They have a nasty habit of knowing how everything every race could possibly build works and operates, plus things nobody else in the universe knows. Naturally, this means that any prison they are held in is usually temporary, despite any and all preventative measures. Although it may immediately tinker with the prison after escaping and then become trapped in the now improved prison from which it will escape and restart the cycle. Logic is not a necessary component of the Warhammer universe. Keeping this in mind, it is not impossible to work with a Jokaro and thus acquire more digital weapons. If you can convince them you are friendly, they won't run from you and you can essentially roll with them for a while, hopefully getting some digital weapon death bling in the bargain. If you are the grimdark version of Jane Goodall, you might even manage to acquire one as a pet co-worker, seeing as they are a very rare and valuable resource. However, this is exceedingly rare, and accounting for the vastness of known space, only the wellest to do of rogue traders, beastmasters, and super rich, 
eccentric imperial lords have a jacaro in their possession. At least one has been kept as a permanent retainer to an inquisitor and was happy to go along with whatever they wanted. It even repaired a super heavy tank to full working order and then proceeded to improve it in every conceivable way, making it as fast as a salamander which came in pretty handy when it came to tank shaking demons. Barring all this, Jacaro are still stereotypically finicky, making do hikes on a whim, sometimes not at all, sometimes for days straight. There is no guarantee that the gadgets it makes will be digital weapons, however. Anything it does make will assuredly be magnitudes more advanced, and smaller, than any imperial equivalent, if there is one. For example, if you plead at it for months on end to build you a finger-mounted meltigan, and it can make a suddenly forehead mounted multi-melter in 3 hours, the Jacaro might still just ignore you, get hungry, and build an anti-gravity energy field banana peeler, use it once and then throw it away only to build a diesel power diamond tip banana peeler a week later. As said above, the Jacaro mostly make things out of simple survival need, self-defense lasers, multi-dimensional backpacks, infrared goggles, and the like. But they're wildly inconsistent about what they do and don't value and are apt as not to eagerly trade a plasma pistol for a banana. For they can always build another plasma pistol but the banana is a banana. It's also worth noting that they completely disprove the Mechanicus notion that all technology the Imperium might need was invented in the dark age of technology. Jacaro and Warhammer Adventures. An adult Jacaro named Flagon Parlor joins the gaggle of child heroes in Attack of the Neck. He is nicknamed Fleepit, much to his chagrin. The Lex Machanic, Erasmus, claims that they are native to Holy Terror, but he may be in error. The Galactic Compendium in the back of the second book clarifies that they are not from Holy Terror. Flegon Parler is given a chapter from his own perspective, which shows that Jacaro are fully sapient, though he is not able to speak in low gothic. His technological aptitude is depicted as being wondrous. He is able to create a sonic cannon in seconds when a Necron hunter approaches him. When he's first introduced, he is shown to be able to physically overpower an Ogryn. Jacaro in Warhammer 40k tabletop recently, with the Codex. Grey Knights including Jacaro as a possible bodyguard unit for Inquisitors. TG quickly found a loophole in the rules that allowed them to field an entire army of space orangutans, the so-called Barrel of Monkeys army build. The result is that Codex. Grey Knights has been jokingly called Codex. Jacaro. By the way, you know those little shiny rings they have those extremely small, light, and tiny rings yeah. Those are all fucking less cannons. And heavy flamers. And multi melters. At the same time. Step 1. Players 6000 points apocalypse game. Step 2. Field Inquisitor Cotis as HQ and 163 Jokero Step 3. Take a picture of your opponent's face when he realizes you have 163 less cannons multi melters heavy flamers. That is. Can't fuck up anything. Step 4 Step 5 Prophet Step 6 Die a horrible death that could satisfy corn for centuries. Could. Our very first Kickstarter is currently live and will be running until the 19th of November. The gas station after hours is a source book meant to be used as a diving board to create a game based around the setting. Players take on the role of a minimum wage employee working in a gas station. They try and go through their usual day-to-day -day activities while contending with the abnormal, supernatural, and downright dangerous. This game is meant to be completely open-ended and allow for pure exploration. Your GM, general manager, will be leading down paths of oddity and horror as they see fit. One may embark on a journey completely at random, using the dice roll tables or pick and choose the story threads you wish to follow. £5 for the PDF, £10 for the physical print plus postage costs. If this is something you are interested in we will only be doing this product once. You will not be able to buy the book after the Kickstarter or the PDF however we may do a second run of the book if they're not people are interested. Links down below. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbeardiacontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video.